All right, chat. Let's do this. It is time. Another season begins. Let's see how we do. 4 nothing loss to the Bruins to kick things off. We will look at the draft class now. There is a... Oh, yeah, 6-4. He's definitely a power forward. Tristan Love. So, and this dude's 6-3. That's a belt of law. So maybe, just maybe, if we have a horrible season, there will be some players available to us. We are 0-5 on the season. This is... This is going to be interesting. And then we won four out of our next five. If you give Alexander off a different helmet, does it fix the glitch? I prefer the story that he just has the helmet glued to his head. Okay? That's just... That's... We're, we're going with that. I'm not trying to fix that. At the end of this month, we'll see how Ty Domi's doing on that top line. I mean, we're still doing relatively okay. Ish. Ish. Okay, now we're 8, 14, and 2. Never mind. Uh, Bayer, 22 points and 24, 14 goals and 8 assists. Okay, that pace is uh, really dying down. Ty Domi, get off of that line. Brian McGratton, come on down. You are back on the top line. Get Joe Bayer into his happy place, damn it, because Brian McGratton is back. Minus 8 for Vettero, minus 8 for Alexandrov. Winkler has an 897 so far this season. Let's march on. Let us march. We move. Let's keep going. Into January. We'll see if Ryan McGratton on the top line helps at all. In the meantime, though, it looks like we are just going to be awful. 11, 18, and 3. Slowly, my optimism surrounding the team is chipping away. <laughs> Play the games. Absolutely not. That's not what we do here. Uh, but, wow. Oh, man. Buyer's really falling off. And we are dead last in our division. This, this is not working this year. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Not great. We are a bottom four team in the league right now. Bottom three in terms of offense. Bottom three in terms of goals against. We just, in general, suck. And I guess it just kind of goes to show that we've overperformed in the past couple of years because now just... Yikes, man. Yikes. Why does the dog keep barking? Jesus. You know, here, give me a second to, uh, give me a second to step out for a second. I'm gonna bring the dog in here before she wakes the girlfriend up. She probably already has. All right, doggo secured, controller on the floor. It is unfortunate, but we are back. Now, I was thinking in that quick moment, oh, do we just, do we just sim? Because let's be honest, Let's be honest. We're just gonna suck. Pretty much no matter what we do. We're gonna be a bad team. Yeah, let's just rip the band-aid off and keep simming here. This season, uh, pretty much in every way. I don't think Joe Byer is gonna be able to help put a positive spin on this one, right? So, anyway, let's move on. Big Wally, I appreciate that, man. Welcome aboard. Welcome aboard. So, yeah, let's let's just see uh, how bad this team happens to do, shall we? Let's see. I uh, get a decent uh, prospect from the AHL to play. I mean, that's the thing, though, right? We have them in the AHL. It's just it's not worth calling them up this season. Like, next year, I think perhaps we go with the strategy of playing some of the youth and dropping some of these veteran goons. Bayer only has 44 points in 50 games. So he is not going to hit 100 points for the first time in uh, three seasons. Even McGratton on the uh, top line is not getting it done right now. Just everything about this team, we are failing. And predictably, that second pairing is a disaster. Uh, 
Oh boy. Yeah, this team is this team's just a disaster right now. I don't think we can save it. Again, Carlton, Ekman, these guys will likely be in the NHL next year. As disappointing as it's going to be to see that point total for Bayer drop and to see this team be this bad, I think we just let it be. I think we just let it be. Accept our fate and move on from there. I got scratched by my dog's nails when I picked her up. Fuck. Oh boy. All right, we'll list ourselves as buyers just for the, the mentality side of it. Let's we'll see what kind of big deals went down. Now would be the perfect time to have the Nelson laughing clip. Hold on. Hold on. I don't have it on the stream deck. I don't really, uh... Uh... I don't have it on the stream deck, but... Really quickly. Let's just, um... Let's just mute this, really. There we go. Alright. And we'll decline that. Thank you very much. So, 21, 37, and 5. Dead last in our division. Bayer will be lucky to hit 50 goals. Are we dead last in the league? Second worst team in the league right now. 3rd worst offense. The worst goaltending and defense combination. The loss of uh, the loss of Marchment and Butcher, combined with the wheels falling off of the offense. Ugh. And uh, go figure. A lot of these goons just are not staying out of the box. Bratton's also done just a horrible job on that top line. Sandy McCarthy, come on down. It's your attempt now. I need context for Couture. Uh, dude's a douche. <laughs> the end. All right. We move to the end of April. This season has been our worst in a while. And uh, unfortunately, it looks like now we're going to start winning games to screw ourselves out of a better draft pick when it's far too late to make the playoffs. Bayer up to 43 goals. So, I mean, another 40-goal season for Bayer. He really, wow, holy shit, he really woke up in the past month. You know, maybe having Sandy McCarthy on that top line all season was the right move. I went with Domi and McGratton, and it didn't work. McCarthy was the guy, apparently. We are still last in our division. He's not the angel level, at least no, but he's still a douche. Yeah, so now instead of being bottom two or bottom three, we're bottom five. With four games to go. I will say this, if you're like, hey, why do you think he's a douche? He's not as bad as this guy. When you have to say he's not as bad as somebody, that's scary. Our offense really woke up. Our defense and goaltending has improved because of it. Just too little too late for us here. We play Ottawa. We lose 5-4 to four in overtime. We play Toronto. We lose 6-2. to two. Next up, New Jersey. We lose 4-2. to two. And our final game of the season is against Vegas. We lose 8-5. to five. So Joe Byer will finish with 80 points in 82 games, 45 goals, his weakest season uh, since his rookie year, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that's his weakest season since his rookie year. Not the lowest goal total he's ever had. He's still never scored less than 40 goals in a season. And he's still over a point per game in his career. But that really is kind of an indictment on just how bad the team was this season. I mean, he's still crazy, but yeah. Well, of course, take a look at the team in general. But we still have to send another day here for other teams to finish up their seasons. There we go. So let's take a look around the league. The, the main thing here, just get to the draft as soon as possible. 
We finished as the fourth worst team in the league, again. One point behind Minnesota. Goals for at a 2-9-1, which was, as you can see, in the bottom 10. Our goals against average was the second worst in the league. Only Calgary allowed more goals than we did. In terms of scoring. Again, we already saw the Joe Byer stat line. Oberg actually had his best point total and his first ever 30-goal season. So not too bad for Marcus there, who again was a second-round pick. Whoops. From there, obviously, the point totals dropped off a, a little bit. Kreider was on 56. I mean, McCarty, Prober, Domi, Nyla, McCarthy. Like, it's weird, though. Like, secondary scoring was actually okay. You know? It was actually all right in terms of the point totals. Just the issue is we didn't have, like, one more high-scoring dude. We had four 20-goal scorers, including Ty Domi. Defensively... That, God, that second pairing just absolutely sank us. Ebbett had 14 goals, though, as a rookie, which is pretty nice. And then goaltending-wise, jeez. That, uh, that was our big problem right there. That was our big problem. Winkler was not ready. Maybe we should... It, it wouldn't have mattered all that much in the grand scheme of things, but... Oh, man, you gotta wonder. Long term, hopefully it works out for the sake of his development that he didn't spend an extra season in the minors. Oberg with 194 hits. He's a menace. Shitload of fights. Shitload of fights for the veterans. Damn. Uh, really quickly around the league, this dude fought 25 times. Holy crap. For the forwards, 117 points. Jakeichel leading the way. Goal scoring king, 57 goals. It was locked the on off. Bayer finished tied for fourth with Patrick Line in 45 goals total. So a bad season for Bayer. He was still top four in goal scoring. You know? Took fewer shots and had a better uh, shooting percentage in line A as well. So, uh, for the hell of it, the assist leader was Ronald Darling in New Jersey. And a couple of Dillons locked the on offs at 90. I mean, he's playing alongside Jack Eichel. So, I mean, obviously, those two are just boosting each other up. Defensively, John Carlson is going to win another award. Baseball fan, what's up, man? Ekman Larson scored 23 goals now in Arizona. For the goaltenders, the winningest was Philip Gustafson in Chicago. Save percentage leaders, Leonard and Demko. Or a shout-out leader, save percentage leader. At least among starters was Ukopeka Lukanen, who somehow ended up in Florida. Uh, baseball fan, yes they are. Indeedly doodly. And for the rookies. It's going to be Hunter Rizzi. Or perhaps Pavel Fenisenkov. We didn't have anybody up there, unfortunately. This season really was, as much as I hate to say it, because I had some high hopes. Like, panic at the disco, high hopes. And, uh, yeah, we... We just... We... Nothing went right for us there. I mean, the defense, the goaltending, the goal scoring, the coaching, perhaps. It just wasn't there. We shall sim to the end of the postseason and see what's up. Uh, yes, baseball, uh, baseball fan. 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Friday and Saturday. The ECL Elite Division Finals. Myself, Sinski, covering the finals of that tournament. Excited for it. And again, uh, for anybody who doesn't know, screw it. Here, I mean, then again, by the time this ends up on YouTube, it would have been done already, I think. Maybe. I'm trying to think if I have any episodes in the can. I think I do. So, yeah. Well, whatever. NHLGamer.com. Uh, let's move on. Tampa fires their coach as the Toronto Maple Leafs win the Stanley Cup. Everything is not coming up Millhouse. <laughs> uh, let's take a look. As they beat San Jose in six. After beating Montreal in seven in the conference final. 
We'll, of course, take a look at their roster as we do. As we do, as we do. Give me one second here just to uh, just check something. There we go. My bad background stuff. Let's take a look at Toronto. Matthews, Marner, Anders Lee. Victor Rask is on this team. Troy Terry. I mean, yeah, we're at the stage where the AI teams are uh, changing drastically. Dougie Hamilton's a leaf. <laughs> okay. I've had enough NHL 21 for today. Uh, the award winners. The award winners. Chikaikel wins his second consecutive Art Ross, as well as his first heart. The Norris to Erasmus Darlene. Lady Bing to the Brinket. Calder went to Rizzi. So that breaks the streak of every other year we had a Calder winner. Mitch Marner wins the Conn Smythe. Vesna to Lukanen. Gustafson to Jennings. The Masterton to Seth Jones. Levesque in Washington wins the Chick Adams. Insert Triple H jokes here. Selkie goes to Ryan O'Reilly. Who else? The Chikaikel wins. I'm calling him the Chikaikel. Wins the Ted Lindsay. And locked the on off on the Rocket Richard. The AHL. Uh, Ekman, one top rookie. That's a very good sign for someone who we have aspirations of making the NHL lineup next year. Lozon was defenseman of the year. Ryan Paling was MVP of the playoffs. Let's uh, let's take a look at the AHL scoring here really quickly because second year in a row they didn't make the playoffs. Uh, I actually can't see his numbers here. Bales had 73 points. It called him up automatically to the NHL. So we'll have to see how good Ekman happens to be. Whoa, holy shit. No, Burnaby very much made the playoffs. I just missed it. They won 59 goddamn games and lost in the first round. <laughs> oh, Burnaby. Burnaby, Burnaby, Burnaby. So really quickly then, progress reports... Kasparaitis with some good improvement. Ebbett with some big improvement. He's up to an 82. Very good news for us as some of our vets are falling off hard. Ekman's up to a 76. Whoo! 48 goals, 89 points as a rookie. Can you say hello to our new first line right wing alongside Oberg and Bayer next season? If this kid's capable of putting up those numbers, oh baby. We didn't get crazy development out of line mate Carlton though, nor Louie. Koltsov was okay, and Minen was okay. I mean, we did get some development here and there. I'm looking for dudes with higher potentials. Bentley went up to a 64. Problem is he's, he's 22 years old now. Which is a nightmare. Is Ekman bald? I mean, we're gonna find out, aren't we? You have Theodore now up to a 59, 55 for Geisberger. <sighs> it's a tough call to say if enough of these guys manage to develop at a high enough rate. So with that, we get to shift our focus to the draft. The big question now. If we can get a number one overall pick, Jake Carpenter awaits. And we have a second option in Tristan Love. 50 goals for the Winnipeg Ice, currently being scouted. We need a top four pick. We have been screwed by the lottery two straight years in a row essentially, but have done well to recover. We need a top four pick. We could get uh, Sturm or Chimera here. They're decent secondary options. <sighs> we need a top four pick. Prayer circle, guys. <laughs> Initiate prayer circle. Oh, God. We, uh... God, we need this. Desperately. Please, God. Here we go. Please, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. We need, we need, give me some more retro synth wave, damn it. 
I need more synth wave to fuel the fire. <sighs> Please. Praying to Jesus. We're praying to Jesus. Number one, number one, number one, number one, number one, number one. That is the third or fourth. We've never actually won the lottery. We've always gotten bumped down. Alright. Let's see how we overcome this. It's Patrick Kane, Patrice Bergeron, Blake Wheeler, David Krejci, Jamie Benn, Logan, I got waved, Couture. John Carlson, Drew Dowdy, Petro, Tori Kirk, Ranta, Koskinen. Shit. Chris Kreider actually retired with one year left on his deal, so that problem solved at least. So there's no way we're getting Jake Carpenter. We have to hope that the team in front of us takes Kirill Grachev or George Fournier. That's our only hope. That is our only hope. If it's gonna be anybody, it's gonna be love. Carolina, number one, selects Carpenter. Who would have probably pushed Oberg to our second line center. That sucks. Second overall. Nashville takes Peltola. Third, St. Louis takes Love. Whoever's called it out saying they thought he'd be a high top six, you were correct. Both of our players are gone. We now have to look towards options later in the draft, unfortunately. Let's uh, let's see what we got here. Again, it's power forwards, grinders, defensive defensemen, and enforcers. So our first option is down here with Leon Sturm. From there, Edwin Chimera. There is a low elite power forward in Niedermeyer, but we also have Saprikin. There is Yanni Kuka. And then from there, we'll worry about the next round. Saprikin. Couple A's, couple B's, couple C's. Three year ETA Luchich comp. Sturm. Couple B's, couple C's, and an A in physical. One year ETA with a Chara comp. Good leader as well. Leon Sturm's the favorite right now over Saprikin. He might actually have a shot at still being a medium elite. The German Chara, huh? Yanni Kuka, absolutely outmatched. Chimera. Straight B's with an A- minus in physical. Scott Hartnell, Hartnell comparison. Two-year ETA. And then Niedermeyer, the low elite. 41 goals. Jesus. NHL ready. So if we take a forward, we take Niedermeyer. If we take a defenseman, we take Sturm. Niedermeyer as a low elite, straight A's for the most part. I mean, a B in skating and defense, no weaknesses, NHL ready. Or we take the one year ETA Chara comp because there's a chance he could be a medium elite. We are still at the stage of needing everything. And goalie-wise, Copeland and Peters, I mean, that's dropping off a bit. Copeland will probably leave. And Abbott, Kasparaitis, Sopel, Pajot, Alexandrov. We are still going to need somebody else on defense to step up. 
forward wise buyer Ekman of course we don't know if Geisberger will make it Bentley's definitely not gonna make it that's the type of guy that you flip it's uh, it's gotta be Niedermeyer it's gotta be he's NHL ready low elite is sick I really thought it was gonna be Sturm especially for the leadership qualities however there is no doubt about it it has to be Andrew Niedermeyer Not bad. Not bad at all. After missing out on Tristan Love and Carpenter, number one overall, we take Niedermeyer. Again, if we were allowed to trade, obviously it's just, hey, trade up into the first round and get this guy later on, but we're not allowed to do that. He is incredibly well-rounded at a 77. And maybe, just maybe, he is our new top-line right winger. So EA... Uh, EA taketh away, but EA also giveth with Niedermeyer. The question now is with Sturm, German Chara. Is he as good as advertised? Is he as good as advertised? He wouldn't have been a bad consolation either if Niedermeyer wasn't there. But it was pretty obvious we had to take Niedermeyer in that moment. We absolutely made the right choice. I wouldn't have been that upset to have ended up with Sturm or Chimera for that matter. But yeah, obviously, obviously we got a little bit of a gift, did we not? We got a low elite early stages of the second round too here just to see if we missed out on anybody good. Kuka wasn't that good. All right, so who's available now in the second round? Didn't win the lottery, but it's tough to say uh, we had a bad first round. We obviously didn't. Question now. Is there going to be anybody here? We only have two players so far. Make that three. Vyacheslav Yakupov. There's a goalie. We could be back in the market. I, God, why couldn't you be a power forward? We could be back in the market for goalies. If... Yeah, we could be back in the market for goalies. <laughs> the Slovenian. We're going to need a timeout here. I don't think we'll take goaltenders. But if there's nobody else available, we will. Yakupov. Not the best starting overall. Four-year ETA. Murphy comp. Potentially a medium elite. Then there is Tony Matanen couple of B's, four-year ETA. We'd go for Yakupov over him. Rudy Hogan. Good shooting category, three-year ETA. We'd go for Yakupov over you. Nick Nelson. Not bad. Elite speed, despite the C-minus in skating. Three-year ETA, I'd still go for Yakupov. Joachim Norn and three B's and an A. Three B's and an A. Difference is that starting potential. Fanboy! The man was a fanboy! Sergey Jeff, thank you for the resub, buddy. I'd still probably go for Yakupov. There's Lundmark in goal who we couldn't risk it with. A plus shooting for Glenn Harkins. Four year ETA. This is tough because this will be very easy to screw up. Holy shit, is it? Mm. Dude, medium elite, and he has straight Bs with a three-year ETA in goal. <sighs> Damn. And again, the three-year ETA for Hogan and Nelson. Norrin as well. The goalie is the safe pick. Like, there's no doubt about it, the goalie is the safe pick, but do we want to risk it? Because in theory, like, no doubt, if this is a normal series, we take Zygomanis. Here's the problem, though. We have Winkler, we have Copeland, we have Peters. We should be fine. We really have no reason to ever draft a goalie again. One of these three, if not two of these three, should be good enough to get the job done. We need defense. Desperately. Thank you. 
desperately. As you see here, a lot of our higher potential dudes, or at least two of them are lower overalls. Mm. I mean, there is a chance that goalie is available in the third round. Because if I'm not mistaken, he was uh, right on the cusp of being a third rounder. 68th. He should still be there. It's going to be close. We got, we got to go for Yakupov. We have to do it. I know it's a risk, but we need position players more than goaltenders. We're going for Vyacheslav Yakupov here. And if we still get Zygamanis, then we get him. And if not, the problem is I'm not sold on Yakupov. I, I don't disagree that I don't think he's great. Uh, fuck. This is tough. Because there isn't a clear option to pick that we're eligible to pick here, I would say. This is easily a selection where it's, okay, you know that there's a very good chance that somebody better would have gone off the board already. If we don't take Zygamanis heading into the third round, Medium top 60 FD and Grant Andreoff. There is Ted Skilly, a defenseman who could be very similar. He only has a three-year ETA. Braden Ennis we know nothing about. Could make the argument, take the goalie, take Skilly. I was hoping to see more of a slam dunk. Nick Daly. Nick Daly might, I mean, he might not be a slam dunk. But we do have similar options to Yakupov. Medium four and Dwayne Harold. Five years out at 18, he's looking rough. I think we don't risk it. I think we take the goaltender and I think we take Harold. I think that just settled it. We're taking Alex Zygamanis here in the second round. Straight B's, no weaknesses, guaranteed medium elite. Alex Zygamanis is the pick. Didn't think we'd be taking a goalie, but let's do it. 65, medium elite at 18 years old. I don't regret it. I don't regret it. I'm a Leafs fan. I see the Bruins flag. I mean, if I had a uh, if I had a dollar for every Leafs, Habs, or Canucks fan in this chat, I'd be a very, very rich man. Blues fan, welcome aboard. I know I don't stream at optimal times, but hey. Okay, who do we miss out on there? Who do we miss out on? Did we make the right choice? Mothinen wasn't that good. Hogan wasn't that good. Oh boy. Did I skip right Pat? Woo! Yep, we made the right choice. I genuinely had the feeling that Yakupov was that bad. That's why I didn't just immediately pull the trigger. We made the right choice. Thank God. Thank God. And now, here in the third round, obviously we don't need another goalie. We're going to be fine. It really does come down to one of the two. Ted Skilly for the risk pick. Nick Daly is also a little bit risky. Or, I mean, how Dave Weirkoch as well. Or we go for Dwayne Harold. It's pretty much what we're looking at. First round was a 77 overall low elite winger. So Harold's the guaranteed medium four. Weirkoch. He's 18. Might be a medium elite. No word on the ETA. Three year ETA for Daly. I like Daly more than Weirkoch. And then Skilly. Skilly has a three year ETA. Interesting. Interesting. I kind of like Daly. But Skilly with that three-year ETA is very promising. I think we, despite the fact that Harold's kind of a guaranteed potential, it's Daly or Skilly. Has to be. 
And we've already added the great forward. I mean, again, the three Bs and Cs, like he's well-rounded. We're going with Ted Skilly. This is the time to risk it here in the third round. This is the time. Jesus! <laughs> Please. Please. A 61 overall enforcer. That is why he was projected to be only three years away because the bar is much lower for enforcers. <laughs> it's not bad. Like, that's a pretty good potential for an enforcer. He's a 5'11 enforcer as well. 95 aggressiveness. It's okay. It's okay. We'll see where Harold happens to be. I think it was worth the risk because Harold, I wouldn't be surprised if he's like a 55 or some shit like that. We'll see. Lumark was, I mean, a good potential, but obviously the uh, overall sucked. I don't regret risking it in the third round because, again, Harold uh, wasn't a slam dunk. Like I said, Andreoff was about the same. Let's see. Ennis wasn't that good. Medvinov was about the same. Daly's a 61, medium 9, so yeah, those two were pretty close. We were caught. Yeah, there you go. Harold, 53. Did, I mean, we almost pulled off the double and got them both. So we'd rather have a 61 medium top six or a 53 medium top four. Honestly, I feel like they all kind of come out in the wash and it's just, it, it's basically the same thing. So I don't, I don't hate it. I don't hate it. It's okay. It's okay. We didn't do that poorly there. Fourth round. It's not as if we got like a low seventh, you know? Uh, Dawson Mare, we're obviously going to avoid. We took our one goalie and we're going to be fine. Uh, Sergei Markov would just be if there's like truly nothing else. A plus physical from McLeod, potentially. Uh, let's just get everybody here. Delorier, obviously someone to keep your eyes on. Low nine, no thank you. Close to low nine for Winther, but we'll still add him. Peluso, perhaps. Okay, maybe we take another goalie. God damn it. <laughs> this draft just keeps throwing goalies at us, and it's really not what we need. So Markov is just... Fuck it, there was nobody else. McLeod has that physicality. But he's an overager, so I'd probably avoid him. Maybe. I'd probably go for McLeod over Markov. Lindgren. Raids are kind of horrible for your ETA. I'd go for, uh... I'd go from a cloud. Oh, over. good! Really is Festerling. I'm guessing it's risk 14 14. Thank you for the follow. Straight C is 1B, four year ETA. Those two kind of even out. Cooperman. Couple of Bs, couple of Ds, four year ETA. I'd go for the other ones over him. Then we get to the interesting ones here Cristiano Peluso. Mostly C is 1D, nothing else. That's a high-risk, high-reward pick. Bernard Delorier is an overager. So that's an absolute no. Even if it does label him as a uh, fantastic leader. At 19, five years out, absolutely not. Risk again, a bunch of people catching the streams here for the first time. Love to see it. Yeah, uh, Burned Banach is uh, terrible. We, we gotta go for we gotta go for higher risk picks than that, and then there's Exelby. But probably avoid. So obviously, if we're going full try hard mode, we go for the goalie, right? It's at this stage though where man, we already took a goaltender, it worked. So at the end of the draft, you'd be like, well, it was him or a low nine, so it makes sense. But if we miss out on someone by not, you know risking it. Again, we have Winkler, we have Zygamanis now, who's basically like, okay, you couldn't deny that guy was worth it. Like, we really shouldn't need help in the goaltending department from here. 
And again, these two, uh, at least one contract's up, and then Peter sat down the year, so his overall might drop. We're not taking the goalie. If we take a defenseman, it's Peluso. If we take a forward, it's McLeod because of the physical. Because that ETA is not confirmed. The problem is McLeod's an overager. Size and strength, though. We did risk it on a defenseman once. But I feel like there's a good chance McLeod will have a decent overall on like a medium nine. Peluso, you're just really banking on it being a medium elite. And obviously the odds are pretty low. Damn, this is such a tough pick. Would I rather say I should have played it safe or I should have? Well, okay, I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to think of this. In terms of the regret, like 30 seconds from now, would I rather say I should have played it safe or I should have risked it? I would much rather have the regret over not. I'd much rather have the regret over not playing it safe then the regret of having not risked it and missed out on a great player. We're going with Peluso. I'm guessing medium top six, maybe medium seventh, but we gotta risk it. Yeah, medium seven. Fuck. Ah, damn it. It was worth the risk, man. That just sucks. Markov, of course, the safe bet. How good is the overager? There is no way that just fucking happened. There is no fucking way that just happened. A 63 overall medium elite enforcer at 19 years old. <sighs> shit, 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 shit. Well, that, um, just gonna just gonna keep this hood on to uh, to hide my shame. Thank you. Wow. Ninety seven strength for the record. One of the biggest sucker punches to the gut. And Delorier was also a medium elite grinder. That is one of the biggest sucker punches to the gut I have ever had in a draft. I just gotta see his trade value. We're not trading for him. We missed. Yeah. Fuck. That was, uh. God, imagine we took him and then we took uh, the goalie again. 
That was, uh... That was the, uh, the pick that really could have done it for us. That is absolutely devastating. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. That sucks, man. That sucks so badly. I can't believe that he was that good, man. Like I said, I mean, every indication, I thought high overall, medium nine. It's the fact that he was a medium elite that just destroys you. So now you know, guys, if you see someone with a fucking A-plus in physical, probably just go for it. I think the next pick is pretty obvious here. We're going to go for Noah Lannon of the Medicine Hat Tigers. You know, there has been nothing about this season that's uh, gone according to plan or that has gone particularly well. The team sucked. Bayer didn't score to the same level. And now this draft, which looked like it was gonna go okay. Then we lost the lottery. Then we rebounded a little bit. And now that missed pick is another medium league goalie, but I'm not gonna do it. Francois Bonny. What else do we have? Steven Kunitz. Potential low, beat, low elite power forward in Mendez. Potential grinder in Sopel. Maybe, just maybe, for this series, we need to put a little bit more importance on uh, overagers again. Really quickly, if someone's way down there on the draft board, they never end up being the. Ha ha! We found a player with Tugness. We might have to take him, boys. He's got Tugness. And if there's one thing I respect, it's a man with some Tugness. Some patience, poise, and Tugness. Bet you didn't know I had my own attribute in the game, did you? Well, I do. Tell me game changers don't change the game. I don't see Nasher with his own fucking trait in this game. Tugness, bitch. I'm so sad. <laughs> so sad. Uh, Lundberg, you're fucking awful. We have higher aspirations than that. And then Marku and Coburn are way down there. So... We have Traverse, Sopel, Mendez, Heinrich, and Bonet. We are in the sixth round. We're going to take two out of the five. It's our final timeout. Traverse. 20-year-old overager. Decent point total. Four-year ETA. Jimmy Sopel. He's 18. No points. Maturity, apparently. Everything else is just awful. Mendez, 18, horrible point total, horrible attributes. Heinrich, 19, no points. Not much to go off of, and then the bonnet. No points, no strength. So pretty much, uh, this is just uh, who the hell we think might be the best. We have four forwards and one defenseman, so it's very obvious we should just take the one defenseman. So Francois from the Cape Breton Screaming Eagles. No longer the Screaming Eagles. They are medium, uh, medium seventh. Fuck. All right. Who's it gonna be? Traverse is four years out at 20 years old. Heinrich's out.
These two are 18, but five years out. In fairness, it comes down to Mendez or Traverse. It really does. Mendez, because we don't know for sure if it's a five-year ETA. Traverse, we do. He's two years older, though. <sighs> Mendez, what's it going to be, buddy? We end the draft with a 49 overall low elite power forward in Jamie Mendez. So that's that's nice in a way. If we had just ended up with him. This would have been a really, really good draft. But that is such a bad miss. Like, just such... Such a bad miss. Ugh. Damn it. Overall, it was still an okay draft. Especially because of the first round. With Niedermeyer. That, that miss to Columbus, taking Peluso at pick 100 instead of McLeod. Like I said, man, I looked at him, we saw the aggressiveness, 19 years old. Okay, he's probably a medium 9. He was not a medium 9. And now we look ahead. Copeland will let go to the market again to see if anything happens. I would just bring back Listen for that reason. We'll go with Peters and Winkler, hopefully. Defensively, Eaton has to be re-signed. Smolinski. Got some other dudes to re-sign. Some guys to sign to their ELCs. Forward-wise, I mean, Oberg's going to need his big boy contract, and then a lot of these veterans might be out the door. And Ekman's up to a 76. Vorobev needs his first deal. He'll probably be in the NHL next year. I'm going to be looking good. But I cannot walk away from this game with a smile on my face because... God damn. The problem is we're never going to know. Right? We're never going to know. Because we don't know how his development would have gone if he was on our team compared to Columbus. But God help us if in five to seven years this guy's like an 85. I'm... Ugh.